my dear, my dear everyone, and a very warm welcome to you all in our Bhagavad Gita study session. Welcome to you, Gaganji and Minuji, our hosts for the session. As you remember, last week's session was really blissful, and I think my biggest takeaway was Radhe Radhe Shyam Similade. So, still in that list of last week's session, I encourage you all to participate fully in this week's session. And as I see the, the flyer that was sent out, it says, why tense up? So I'm eagerly awaiting to hear the wisdom nuggets and all of the teachings that we have to receive today. Over to you, Minuji, for our prayer thanking Hari Guru for their grace as we begin the session. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe, everybody, and a very warm welcome to our Bhagavad Gita study session. Let's start with a prayer to Guru, Lord Krishna, and Radha Rani. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Gopikam Paramam Shodham, Ladinim Shakti Rupini. And over to you, Gagan. Thank you, Mami. Thank you, Labina Ji. Radhe Radhe to everyone as well. And um, welcome to our Bhagavad Gita study series. As Labina Ji reminded us from last week, indeed, the big takeaway was Radhe Radhe Sham Se Milade. We'll continue for our Chapter 7 Churn and Learn journey and take a look at what we have for today. And again, as a reminder, this is the flyer that you presumably saw on the various social media sites. Again, just take a look at that briefly. And now we'll get into our pre-video questions. All right, we have a couple of volunteers to get us started. Sumedha ji, good morning. Radhe, Radhe. Good morning, Radhe Radhe. I'll be brutally honest and authentic. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, when I think about past, present, future, um, fear, fear comes in my mind. Um, um, that's my like really honest answer because past of things that didn't go well, that memory sitting and troubling and the future uncertainty. I mean, those things, yes, those words and uncertainty, unknown, but the very first thought that comes is fear. Oh my, I don't know what's going to happen, if you know what I mean. Uh, Radhe Radhe, good morning and good evening. Uh, so uh, when I think of the past, present and future, my life, it comes in my mind and how I've struggled and uh, grown internally, spiritually. And yes, uh, for future, I'm quite confident that whatever I've learned through the adversities, it's going to um, give me a good uh, result and also I'll be able to handle my future pretty well. I see the past is knowledge and the present is uh, learning and the future is unknown. With that, we can have Mummy take us through the second question. Yeah, but I must say, yeah. you know, very interesting answers. These are all before we see the video. So any answers are uh, good. And then I want everybody to look at the um, answers in the chat window also. Vandana ji has given one answer. Ravi ji has given one answer. So keep those answers also in mind. Radhe Radhe, uh, he knows everything. Even though we think... Um, we think we know everything, but he really knows every, every So this is regarding us. Is Do I understand that correctly? Correct. Okay. Well, uh, certainly the past and the present, uh, but uh, here's where I come to a, uh, a quandary, because if we have free will, then how would, the, how would God know our future for certain? You know, when... when... I thought about this question. The thing that came to my mind is there is a Gurbani Shabbat, which is tu, tuhi mehi mehi tuhi antar kesa. So God is within us. We are in this universe. Universe is within us. 
So to think um, and to be in that delusion that, you know, he is, he resides only in temple. Um, it is a delusion. He's within us. So to answer that question, he knows everything because there is no difference. He, we are part of the Supreme soul. He knows what we know. He knows what we don't know. And he knows what we will know in regard to free will. Free will means that God is not going to force us into a particular decision. We just left that up to us, but he already knows what we're going to decide to do. Roddy, Roddy. Yeah, uh, Radhe, Radhe. So God is uh, biggest of the biggest and smallest of the smallest. And um, he, um, he is in everything. All his three energies, the Brahman, the Jivatma, and the Prem Yoga Shaktis, we are a part of the Jivatma, and uh, then God has uh, given birth to us. His energy is from where we have come from. So our innumerable pastimes, lifetimes, he knows everything. And also for uh, the spiritual seekers, his devotees, he keeps them protected. So he also gives them divine love and knowledge and protects their Kriyaman karma as the free will karma. So whenever uh, through signs and symbols, the universe communicates to us wherever we are going wrong. And that is how our few, the next life is made through our Kriyaman karma. So he knows uh, practically everything. <laughs> I think my, my answer, I think, is similar to the what uh, Brother Mataji has just answered. From the time-based perspective, I think God knows everything uh, about us. This is what, in short, if I have to say. It is uh, for, uh, just to substantiate my answer, I base like this, you know, and <clears throat> Lord Krishna shows Arjun, right, with his Viswarup, what is going to happen to all. So that means uh, he knows everything, what is going to happen in the future also, apart from the past and the present. So from that perspective, I think that he knows everything. Um, I don't believe we know about God uh, uh, fully. I think whatever information we have learned through um, the Shastras, uh, by reading the Vedas, Shastra or uh, Bhagavad Gita, um, but to know his glory or to know about him, it's not even possible. We, we know what he reveals to us. Nothing more. Uh, Radhe Radhe everyone. Radhe Radhe. Koti Koti Namun Hare Maharaji. Maharaji ka ek line hai. Jo jaisa kare pyaar o jaisa mujko paare. Pehchane ya ya ka ya pyaar. Thank you, Radhi Radhi. I think uh, this, uh, this question should be answered by my guru because the guru will tell how much I know about the God or not. I myself don't know about myself too much. How can I talk about the God? Interesting. The guru, I think, yeah. person to tell us where we are and you know where we are progressing or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, glad you mentioned that. And in fact, we're just a few minutes away from the video. So Swamiji will reveal perhaps to us what the answer <laughs> there is, right? Yeah. Yes. And uh, so we have one more question we, before we go for the video. A very warm welcome to many of the new participants today. They used to be with us for different other sessions. And um, happy to have you here, Gayatri Narayanji. Manju Sinaji wrote that she's from Mumbai. So let's hear from two volunteers. Uh, when we completely surrender to God, he will, uh, he will shower his divine love and divine knowledge. That is when we will be capable of knowing him otherwise uh, without his blessings and divine knowledge and love we won't be able to uh, know him it's only through the amount of surrender we do 
and the fate which we render to him, it's only through that we'll be able to know him. I, I'm thinking there are three uh, components, so to speak, of this. Uh, firstly, when, when we completely purify our mind. Secondly, when we completely surrender to God. And then third, when God graces us with his divine grace. I also shared a same answer, I remember, and I remember Swamiji saying that um, he is, he is a Kripa Sadhya, not Sadhan Sadhya, which means that he's not attained by any Sadhan, but by his grace. Without grace, we cannot be achieved anything. Uh, so God's grace is very important. And second thing, our Purusat, uh, practice more to more practice sadhana. And, and then, uh, then Guruji ka hat me tha chhod dene se, Guruji, apne ab, am sabhi ka par me. Okay, thank you, Golabji. So you said Purishat, grace, and surrendering to Guru. Yes. Okay. So with that, we will now um, hear from Swamiji. Let's watch the video and we will get our answers right from there. Yeah, let's uh, surrender ourselves for the next seven or so minutes and listen in trance to Swamiji's video. Take notes as always as a reminder and encouragement. And then after the video, we shall have a few more questions. You have come to know about God? Yes, I am seeking knowledge of God. In that case, first know this. That person who thinks I can know God has no knowledge of God. That person who thinks nobody can know God, he truly knows God. Not only the Vedas come to the Bhagavad Gita. Vedaham samatitani vartamanani charjana bhavishyani jabhutani maam tu vedana kaschana. In the seventh chapter, 26th verse, Sri Krishna says, Arjun, I am Trikal Darshi. I have knowledge of the present, the future, the past. But maam tu vedana kaschana, me, Nobody knows. Why can we not know him? Let's find out. What is the problem with him? The problem is not with him. The problem is with us. The knower. What is the problem with us? Our instruments of knowledge are defective. I think... Uh... As per the Vedas, uh, first they said, if you want to know God, you should know Vedas. And when you try to know Vedas, then it's you will come to it is impossible to know the God. So this is something, I think, a statement <clears throat> or contradicting or misleading. The... And just to summarize the responses and the takeaway as well. So why does Swamiji say the Vedas have deflected us? It sounds like an oxymoron or contradictory, but indeed, if you think you can know God, then you do not know him. If you think you can never know God, then you actually know him. I believe the word is omniscient. Yes, absolutely right. And good reminder, of course, from chapter seven previously, omniscient. So I'll type that in the chat window as well for everyone's reference, omniscient, that is all-knowing. That's a one-word English synonym. Trikala Darshi. Trikala Darshi, that is absolutely right. Thank you so much, Golabji. 
So Trikal Darshi. So I hope everybody understands it. Trikal, three means three. Kal means time. And Darshi means can see. So God can see past, present and future. He is Trikal Darshi. Thank you Golabji and thank you Raviji. You had messaged. Yogamaya. Yogamaya. All right. We'll store that and also hear from Annapurna ji. Radhe, Radhe. Uh, same thing, Yogamaya. Yeah, same thing I wanted to say. The question is Maya. Maya. That is indeed correct. Yep. And I see in the chat window as well, quite a few people have given their responses. So yeah, the curtain upon the soul is Maya. And the previous question was the curtain upon God. So that is Yog Maya. So again, to tie that back together, there is the two different curtains that separate us from God. Maya upon us as souls, Yog Maya veiling. Remember the word veil. Yog Maya veils God from us. All right. Thank you, Labina Ji. And in the video, Swamiji does mention that these ignorant souls, they cannot remove the curtain of Maya. How can they go and remove the curtain of Yoga Maya? Radhe Radhe. Uh, so... Uh, in the video, um, uh, Swamiji explained that, uh, you know, St. Augustine saw a little boy digging a hole and, uh, you know, bringing water from the ocean uh, to fill uh, in that hole. So St. Augustine was very surprised and he asked, you know, what are you doing? He said, I'm trying to fill the ocean water into the hole. And some, and St. Augustine said, it's not possible. How can you fill that uh, uh, ocean in this hole? And I think the, the kid, the, the boy explained that that's exactly what you're doing. You're trying to, uh, I guess, reach the God or trying to know God. And it, it's not really possible that you, it's, it's so hard to actually know God. I think something on the line. Indeed, yep. It is about that hole that the boy was trying to fill with water and that perplexed St. Augustine, right? But then the little boy pointed out that that's analogous to what St. Augustine himself was doing, which is, using words to describe the indescribable God. In a way, meaning that finite words to describe infinitely many different ways, aspects, and forms of God. And I do see in the chat window, we have a few good responses as well. Bilji, I like how you phrased it. Trying to fill a hole with the ocean is as fruitless as trying to understand God with our finite intellects. Problem is uh, our senses are not perfect. They are, you know, defective, and you know, and that's the reason we cannot completely understand our Yes, thank you so much, Sudhakarji. Yep. I see uh, one Adiji is giving very good responses. Um, thank you, Adiji, for uh, uh, great interaction and great participation here. Yes, indeed. And uh, he's also used the right phrase or word, defective instruments, right? Our instruments of knowledge, to be precise, our instruments of knowledge are defective. So here we get the answer from Adi. He's given the correct answer. Anybody else wants to come on the video? Uh, verse 26, chapter 7. Mm -hmm. Where is it? Vedaham samti tani vartmanani charjuna bhavishyani chabhutani maam tu vedana kashchana. So basically, here in the commentary, Swamiji says God is omniscient, He is Trikal Darshi. He knows present, past, and future. 
He knows, remembers our thoughts, our words, deeds of infinite souls at every moment of their life, in each of their infinite lifetimes. The important thing is, but nobody knows God. Why? Because God is infinite in his splendor, his glory, his energies, his qualities, and his extent. Whereas our intellect is finite. We cannot comprehend the almighty God. God is beyond the scope of our intellectual logic. Our words and mind cannot reach God. God cannot be analyzed by our arguments. It is only God who knows himself. Only when God bestows grace upon some soul, he bestows his intellect upon that fortunate soul. And then equipped with God's power, that fortunate soul can then know God. This is all about verse number 26, where God is telling us that with our material intellect, we cannot know God. Talking about past, present, future, not from a tense perspective, but of course from a time perspective, we therefore shouldn't get tense about it because we cannot know God, not with our finite, limited, material, defective instruments of knowledge, right? So as Sri Krishna has, and here we see in the translation, he alone is the one who knows everyone's past, present, and future. We don't know him. Yet, as Swamiji also asks, and the question we had at the start also was about us trying to know God. Well, Indeed, that can happen, but only through God's grace itself. So as Swamiji says in the commentary, as Mami said at the very end, only God knows himself, but if he were to bestow his grace upon any fortunate soul, then of course they get that divine vision, the divine instruments of knowledge and love, no longer material. It's transcended Maya and Yogmaya as well, because how does that grace come? It's Shri Krishna's energy, as we saw last week, Radha, for instance, talking about Radha Ashtami, so that Yogmaya itself is that curtain, that veil, but it's also that energy, that divine form that gets removed. And that is what gets then us connected to God. So then you no longer have those finite material defective instruments of knowledge. You truly have loved God. You get to know God. So again, in the commentary as well, Swamiji does mention the important phrases or words, omniscient, Trikal Darshi, that was in the video. Um, someone earlier, of course, had mentioned karmas, the stockpile. We talked about prarabd. So please do revisit chapter 7, verse 26, the even-numbered verse, as Mami had asked, for the video over here, connecting it with our prior chapter 7 um, journey and learning. And Acknowledging that, of course, we cannot, with our limited instruments, know God. It's going to come and happen only when we get the grace of God. So many of you did say at the start of class, um, surrender. Uh, someone, I think Lavina Ji had mentioned that sadhana alone will not be enough. Pointing towards, of course, you know, bhakti, but also really just the revelation of everything by God himself when he chooses to grace a particular soul. Yeah, I, uh, I am glad uh, to have this session because these are very extremely important to all of us. So on this context, uh, what we are discussing today, uh, I'd like to just say a few words on this. Uh, uh, there was a discussion between uh, Astavakra and Ambhi in the, Darva, in, in, in the courtyard of uh, King Janaka. King Janaka mm. used to conduct sarthas. So there was a rigorous sarth, sarthas between uh, Astavakra and uh, um, uh, Ambhi, Acharya, mm. Acharya Ambhi. So there actually, the, there was a question which was posed, which says that all these scriptures, the Vedas, the Puranas, uh, the Bhaktis, 
and uh, all thing bhakti mark everything whether they can uh, make you got realization the answer was no all these things cannot make us got realization but indeed they can act as catalyst they 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 will they mostly will help you to associate to make your association with god so god sees your efforts and the grace will comes when actually he sees your efforts when we okay we understand that yes by our limited uh, uh, limited um, intellect we cannot know god but yes we can try to know god we can do some efforts to know god and in that process the grace will automatically come thank you very much yes yes very well said manoranjan ji and golak ji in the beginning she had mentioned purusharth purusharth means you know our own effort our little intellect and then with all the sadhana bhakti but of course in the end it is only god's grace um, that can help us to know god thank you very much uh, great participation from everybody and let's take blessings from radha rani जय जय श्री राधे जय जय श्री राधे जय जय श्री राधे